Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Jim Crane with you once again. You know, um, I get asked one question more than any other question, it seems, um, from the channel, and that is something like, I'm just starting out, it's my first purchase, I want a nice quality bag, but I don't have a lot of money to spend. What do you recommend? And typically, I recommend these three bags. Um, we'll go over each one of them. All three of these bags are available brand new still, and they're also plentiful on the secondary market like eBay. Um, and they're all in what I call the affordable range, which is the new bags start around $400, um, and you can get them on the secondary market for from $50 on up. Um, so let's go over them, and um, I'll tell you what I like about them and what I not too crazy about, but all three of these are um, would be good bags if you're just starting out, you don't want to spend a lot of money. Um, the first one is this. This is the J. Peterman Counterfeit Mail Bag. This bag has been around for about 30 years, and um, it's it's come in various iterations over the years. They've changed the spec on it at least seven times that I know of over the last 30 years. Um, contrary to popular belief, this bag has always been imported, although a lot of people think that um, it's, you know, used to be made in the United States in Lexington, Kentucky, and, and then they went off, off uh, overseas. But um, the earliest example of the uh, J. Peterman owner's manual, which is their catalog, where this bag first appears down in the ad copy at the bottom, it says imported. So I'm, I assume they've all been uh, imported, but I've never been able to find a tag in it that says where the bag um, is made. I presume they're made in China or, or someplace like that. Um, but anyway, this is a really good um, bag to start off with. Um, it's made from chrome tanned leather, um, and which means as you use it, it's going to um, it's going to start showing some, some wear on it pretty rapidly. It's kind of like a new buck leather, so it doesn't have a hard surface like a um, veg tanned wood or even some other chrome tanned. It's kind of a new buck, which means it, it, um, the pores are kind of open. Um, it's, uh, the color is, it always seems to be this color, although they, they have come in black and they've come in green and and some other strange colors over the years. Um, as far as the specs, they're all about the same size bag over the years. They've just changed the, um, the quality of the build. And with each successive iteration, they've kind of cheapened up on, on the, um, the hardware and the build quality. But they're all essentially about the same size. You can get the specs from Jay Peterman today, so I'm not gonna go over all those details with you. This is one of the earlier bags, um, and the way you can tell is it uses uh, copper rivets. Um, this is, seems to be the easiest way to tell the age of a Jay Peterman bag. The earlier ones had the copper rivets. As the um, specs changed, they changed to um, uh, like snap rivets um, and then really shiny, stainless steel rivets that are really not attractive. Um, but there's been different, um, they've used different rivets in, in the manufacture of this bag over the years. Um, the pluses are, I love this handle. This is one of the best handles of, of any bag at any price that I've seen. It's just so comfortable. There's a cord in here. Um, it's attached beautifully. They, they did a nice the design is really nice. So when they when they spec'd it out, they did a, a, a really nice job. Um, and this is really a great handle. The uh, shoulder strap on these tends to be very anemic. Uh, there's never a shoulder pad. Um, it's not very long, although you, some of these bags did sell with longer um, shoulder straps, but this is a very short shoulder strap and I've got it at the, the longest, um, um, configuration and it's still too short. So um, I always have these around and this will fit on it. Um, I, you can get these on eBay, Just they're just shoulder straps and then I punch the holes in it with a, 
with a leather punch, and then I can get the size that I need. Um, but nice little bag. Um, let me open it up for you. I've got a little pillow in here to give it some form because it's really kind of a soft bag. Um, there is a pocket, zip pocket on the front, and it will hold quite a bit of stuff, typically your wallet or keys or airline tickets or whatever. It is a YKK zipper. It's a number 10, which is a big zipper, um, and it's virtually indestructible, so it's going to last you a long time. Inside, you can see here, J. Peterman Company, and then it says Lexington, Kentucky. Not made in Lexington, Kentucky, though. It's a really big, gaping bag. You can put a lot of things in here. One time, I actually went on an overnight and just packed some clothes in there. Toiletry bag. Had no problem. It was just a quick overnight. Um, so, nice little bag. Well-designed. Um, very soft. It will, as time goes on, it will age. Um, you'll get scratches, you'll get stains, it'll get dirty. This handle, after a while, turns black. Um, this back panel from burnishing on the side, you know, on your jeans and your shirt, this will get a kind of a shiny, darker brown color to it. Um, and a lot of people love that. A lot of people love that really aged, you know, vintage look. And this bag will do that after a while, so just keep that in mind. So this is alternative number one. Brand new, they're in the $350 range. On the secondary market, I've seen them as low as $40. Um, so just make sure you get a, you know, a fairly nice one. The copper rivets are gonna be the older bags. Then they go to shinier snap rivets that aren't attractive, but the bag is still basically the same. Okay, so the J. Peterman counterfeit mailbag. That's number one. Number two is this little guy. This is actually veg tanned. This uh, you can buy on eBay and on Etsy. And I did a review of this before, so I won't go into too much detail about it, but it's, um, it's veg tan. It's made in China. It is, um, it's a, a nice bag. It's not very big though, okay? So it's not gonna carry a whole bunch of stuff. Not like the, uh, the J. Peterman, which has about a seven and a half inch wide bag. This one's pretty narrow, so this would be more for carrying a, um, a laptop or a iPad or something. Um, just some business essentials, um, but it is well made. They use copper rivets in the construction. Um, it is um, machine sewn, um, but they did a really nice job. I love the graphics on it. It's a very bold impression, U.S. mail, property of the United States Postal Service. It's not, but um, they're trying to give you that, that look. The nice thing about it um, is it is it is veg tan it's a it's a pretty good quality of veg tan leather um it does have a, a pretty big opening and then it's got a zipper compartment the zipper is um i don't know what the what the brand is it's just some off brand um, but in there you can put your wallet and your keys and your phone um and it zips up. I'm not a really big fan of zippers unless it's an indestructible zipper. Um, I can't tell. This says T A L Talon is the name of this zipper. Uh, but it's a, it's a nice quality bag. Um, I love a veg tan bag. Um, the surface is a little shiny for me, but um, that'll wear down if you if you decide you're going to carry it a lot. It does have a shoulder pad. It's got a nice veg tan leather shoulder strap. Solid cast brass hardware. Um, it's a good quality bag for the money. On Etsy, you can get these for around $250 brand new. Um, I think it comes in a larger size now, if I'm not mistaken. This is um, just kind of a smaller bag. It's, it's not going to carry a whole lot of stuff, um, but it's nice for if you're just going to do a weekend travel somewhere on a plane. Um, High quality bag, it's gonna last a long time. I've gone over this bag stitch by stitch and it's just really well done. It's well put together. Um, Chinese labor must be a lot less than the US or, or Europe because um, you get a lot of value for the money. And it does have the traditional piping um, in it. And also I forgot to mention on the J. Peterman, it also has the, the piping in it. So um, I like those little details. It makes for a, 
nice looking bag. Um, so this is alternative number two on the secondary market. I've seen these for a hundred bucks on eBay, but brand new for 259, I think you can't go wrong. I mean, it is the best money you're gonna spend for a veg tanned uh, messenger bag that, that looks like a mail bag. Um, so uh, alternative number two and number three, is my personal favorite. This is from Stickman Leather up in uh, Seattle, Washington. I think it's actually Everett, Washington. Um, Sean Bettinger is the uh, proprietor and, and owner, maker. Um, and he's been making these for a long time, maybe 20 years, maybe longer than that. I've owned three of these over the years. Um, and it's my favorite because it's, um, it's not pretentious. It's not an heirloom quality bag. It is a bag for work. It's a, it's a utility piece. Uh, it's designed that way. Sean doesn't make any bones about, you know, oh, you're gonna, you know, put it in a museum someday. They're designed for, for hard use. They're typically made from uh, chrome tanned leather. This one uh, is as well. Um, he usually uses a, um, kind of a, a pebbled or grained leather, like um, buffalo hide uh, that's chrome tan. So it's got a lot of texture to it. And um, if you go on his website, it comes in three or four different colors of leather. The leathers are pretty much the same. Um, but this one I found on eBay and I noticed the leather was different than what he typically uses. So I bought it as soon as I saw it. Um, I really like this leather. It's got a nice kind of hard surface to it. It's kind of a crazy horse type of leather, um, but uh, I just love it. I, I'm not a big fan of the kind of textury kind of leather. And the only reason is um, I had one and after a while, the little high areas, um, it's kind of like a um, cobblestone road, you know, like a has that kind of texture and the high spots will get snagged or or they can tear open or, or come off and um, that's if you're like you know you hit a, a cinder block wall or something with it um, if you're gentle with your bags like most people are it it will age forever it just won't it won't you won't get those tears in it um, but this one this uh has just got a flat texture to it um, again, like I said, I think it's like a crazy horse type of chrome tan leather. I really, really like it. And occasionally Sean will, will have these in his shop or on his, um, he does a live, um, sales show every once in a while on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and he'll buy a hide or two from his, uh, from his favorite source. And he'll, occasionally he'll get one of these unusual hides and then make some bags out of it. And that's what this was. Um, what I like about it is it is generous in proportions. Um, it's a typical mailbag design. So it's, um, it's you know, wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Um, he's built it, um, he, he calls this the 1930s mailbag, by the way. He's built it properly with um, copper rivets with this flap going over this flap. So to keep, you know, rainwater from coming in. He uses the piping as well, which I really like that detail. I wish more makers would, would do that. That piping not only makes it look nice, but it takes the stress off of this seam. Um, so to have that extra little piece of leather folded in there takes the stress off. And you don't see the stitches. Um, if you were to pull the seam apart, you don't look in and see the little individual stitches. So um, this bag usually comes with two of these buffalo head nickel snaps. I added a third one because I usually don't overstuff this um, and I, I want it to close as much as possible. Um, if you close it down here and then pick it up, it'll, if you have stuff in it, it kind of sags a little bit. So um, I usually, if I find a mailbag that has this kind of closure, I'll usually add a snap right up at the top. And I gotta say, this is my favorite kind of a flap. I love a flap that's just a storm flap. It doesn't have a closure. It doesn't have a buckle. It's just super easy to get into. That's the traditional mailbag way. I just love that. Um, but some of the details I think are really, really nice that he put in the bag. Um, he skived the edge of this storm flap and then folds it over and stitches it so you get a really nice finish to it. You don't just have a raw edge here. 
Um, he uses a large number 10 YKK zipper, um, which is virtually indestructible. You can zip this thing open and closed a million times and not have to worry about it. Um, inside is a pretty generous pocket. So again, your cell phone, your keys, your wallet, airline tickets, whatever. Um, opens and closes very simply. He's done some things to the inside of the mailbag and all of his mailbags are designed this way. So there's two pockets on the front here and then there's always this document pocket in the back. Okay, you can put a um, tablet back there or whatever you need to. Um, the reason I like this bag is because he used the same leather on the outside of the bag um, to make these pockets. And the other bags I've owned from Sean, he'll use a, um, a thinner kind of like upholstery type leather when he, when he, um, when he fits out the interior. Um, one bag I had, it was kind of a, kind of a dark brown buffalo hide. Um, and when you opened it up inside, it was purple leather, <laughs> which you don't see. But um, I personally, I didn't care for that. But this one, he's using the same kind of uh, crazy horse leather. And so I was really, really happy to, to find this bag. If you go on his website, you're not gonna, you're not gonna find this particular leather. But if you, um, if you uh, sign up to his Facebook page or Instagram, um, they'll alert you when they're gonna have a, a sale and he'll, that's when these kind of more unusual bags come out. Or if you're up in the Seattle area, he has a booth at the Pikes Place uh, Market. Um, so, um, and he'll, you know, he may have a, an unusual bag like this there as well. But this bag, brand new, just a, a little over 400, I believe, 425 or 450. Um, and then on the secondary market, I've seen these anywhere from about $200 to, to three, 350, if it's a really nice example. I forget what I paid for this, but it wasn't much, I think a couple hundred dollars. Um, but um, he really, really puts these bags together well. They are gonna last you for years and years. They're affordable, the dimensions are right. You don't have to worry about abusing it. Um, they're not so expensive that you, you know, you don't want to, you know, toss it on the driveway or something. They're, they're cheap enough that you can do that. You can just wear them, use them, abuse them. Um, so when someone asks, you know, I want something affordable, it's usually these three bags. It's the Jay Peterman uh, bag, um, or it's um, this little guy from Etsy, and I'll put the link in there. I forget the name of the, the maker here. But um, these bags, you can't go wrong. They're all high quality bags. Um, they're all affordable. They're all well-made. Um, so it's just, it's your choice, whatever you like. Okay, so um, I've got another review coming up pretty soon. So I'll see you guys then. Um, we've got some uh, products coming in from uh, Eastern Europe, from Ukraine and Romania that uh, I'm uh, happy to show you guys. I'm really looking forward to it. So take it easy. Top to off for now. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.